Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Today is June the 22nd, 2018. Let's talk Dylan White against Joseph Parker. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. To understand this fight, let's go back to a round that I always use for just boxing style purposes. It's the first round of a heavyweight title fight where a seven to one favorite with one of the best jabs in heavyweight history found himself in the ring against an underdog named Cassius Clay in Clay's first attempt at the title. And let me just put it to you this way. Sonny Liston, whose jab was legendary. Liston could bust you up with the jab. Understand, Liston, the demolisher, was really a jabber. Liston found that he just couldn't find Ali with the jab. The first round is Ali just dancing around, proving to Liston that you can't touch me with the jab. And Liston wasn't a good enough athlete in relation to Ali to track him down. I believe the same dynamic exists in this Dylan White versus Joseph Parker fight. Dylan White has one of the better jabs in the heavyweight division. Right now it worked against Lucas Brown, a fight that surprised me because Lucas Brown surprisingly in my eyes came in hopelessly out of shape, hopelessly bloated, and gave away his foot speed, right? Dylan White gets the stoppage, right? Keying off a jab. Look at the film of that fight. Just understand that unless Joseph Parker hits the buffet table, like Lucas Brown did, Unless Joseph Parker decides to come in bloated without his athleticism and decides to stand in the pocket so he's getting pummeled by a jab, I'm expecting Joseph Parker, who is one of the better athletes in boxing, I'm expecting Joseph Parker to use foot movement to move away from Dylan White and to not get hit with the jab. In other words, jabs don't work against superior, better moving athletes. So what does that leave you with? That leaves you with the rest of Dylan White's game, and I don't think it's enough against Joseph Parker, right? Unless the referee from the Parker-Joshua fight shows up, if they have a legit referee, I'm expecting Joseph Parker's superior athleticism and superior boxing skills to rule the day. Now, I understand this is a minority point of view. I've looked at the lines, and the odds makers have this fight pretty even, don't they? So I believe the Parker side of the play represents compelling value. But I need for you to understand the risk involved, and it's substantial. Dylan White just beat Lucas Brown at the O2 Arena. The crowd was behind Dylan White in that fight. Guess what? Dylan White is back at the O2 Arena. The fight is in Dylan White's backyard. Joseph Parker has to be thinking to himself, especially after hearing the very curious to these eyes scoring for the, his fight against Joshua, that he's going to have to win this fight by a few rounds to get the decision on the scorecard. What I'm suggesting here is that he's going to do exactly that. Let me break with the public narrative here a little bit. I really view his fight against Joshua as a location fight, right? In other words, same fight, even with that terrible referee, same fight, if it had taken place in New Zealand, I believe Joseph Parker would have had his hand raised, right? I believe the location, the crowd, 
the uh, social momentum, we'll call, we'll call it, had Cash Cow Anthony Joshua win that fight. Also, while Joshua flashed a jab a lot in that fight, I don't think Joshua's jab is as effective as Dylan White's jab. So I believe Joseph Parker intentionally took a lot of Joshua's jabs because Parker was trying to go to the body in that fight, right? So I know that those of you who are gonna look at the copy box for the Joshua, uh, Joseph Parker fight, and they're gonna say, hey, Parker got hit with some jabs. In fact, the jab was Joshua's most successful punch, right? I believe that's because Parker was trying to get inside on Joshua. I believe here Parker doesn't have to stay inside against Dylan White. I believe style-wise he can be episodic. Think Sean Porter. He can jump in, throw combinations, get out. Think David Hay, right? Also, because Dylan White's jab's better than Joshua's jab, I think Parker is wise enough to realize he can't get hit with too many of them. So I believe this is going to force Joseph Parker to bring his A game, and I think his A game exceeds anything Dylan White can bring to the table. The bet I'm recommending, and yes, I understand the public sees this differently. Yes, I understand the fight is in the United Kingdom, not New Zealand, right? Yes, I understand Joshua landed more jabs than any other punch against Joseph Parker. The bet I'm recommending is Parker to win, right? Parker to win, hedged with Dylan White by stoppage. Right? I don't believe Dylan White gets the stoppage, but he did stop Lucas Brown. In fact, if you look at the fights he had before fighting Anthony Joshua, you're going to notice that Dylan White had a KO streak going. But make no mistake, this is a fighter who fought to a split decision, a fight that could have gone either way against Derek Chisora, a fighter I believe Joseph Parker would manhandle. Also, don't be fooled by Joseph Parker. I know he lost to Anthony Joshua, at least officially. Okay, and he did look a little lackluster, but understand, he had two men in the ring who were making life rough for him that night. Joshua was one of them. The other one was the referee, right? Joseph Parker still, today, is one of the most talented heavyweights. I believe you have an unbalanced situation in the heavyweight division where AJ and Deontay Wilder are wearing the belts. But guys who, in my opinion today, could beat one if not both of them, right? Tyson Fury, Joseph Parker, these guys are a little bit on the outs, right? For different reasons. Parker loses with a bad referee in the UK. Tyson Fury is coming back from a mental health break. Okay, okay, understood, right? But let me say there is a gap, in my opinion, between a very good competitor, which is what I view Dylan White as, and a guy who could be king if he gets another opportunity, right? I like Joseph Parker in this one. I'm still on the Parker bandwagon, right? He's one of the few heavyweights who can actually move around the ring. If you want to see a fight where Joseph Parker is on his front foot, cutting off the ring aggressively for 12 rounds in the United Kingdom, I want you to look at his fight against Yui Fury. Right? I think Dylan White doesn't have Fury's footwork. I believe Parker has the faster foot speed between the two guys. I think Parker is the harder guy to find in the ring. Right? While I was disappointed with Lucas Brown's performance, let's just say I don't think in my life I've seen Lucas Brown more out of shape than he was 
against Dylan White. I don't consider that version of Lucas Brown to be the A-level Lucas Brown who took the title from Richland Chagayev, took out Richard Towers, beat James Toney. Right? Just compare and contrast Lucas Brown's footwork in his bout against James Toney with his lack of footwork in his bout against Dylan White. Right? So I think Dylan White right now is a little bit of a bubble. We saw a great performance. It was a great performance. Right? He beats up and then stops Lucas Brown, who's knocked out on the canvas. Right? It's jabs and power punching. I believe the public is reading a little bit too much into that. And they're discounting the fact that against Anthony Joshua, Joseph Parker becomes the first man to go the distance and actually, in Joshua's backyard, lands more power punches than Joshua does. In a fight where the ref wouldn't allow him to get inside. So I like Parker here. I'll hedge the play with White by KO. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.